And here we are. It's a podcast for professionals, believers, and genuine people looking for genuine conversation. My name is Kia Harris Tagren, and I'm your host. I'll be sharing information about nonprofits, faith, business, entrepreneurship, life, and much more. I am so excited for you to be joining me. We are called to be set apart. I remember when I was growing up, I often saw the NTW, Not of This World, which was on people's cars and they had stickers and all the things. And I grasped at the time, but I didn't exactly grasp it. I could even remember there was a music video that would come on this Christian channel in the evenings and it would talk about being a Jesus freak. And I just didn't understand it. It kind of offended me because I was like, what are they talking about? There are things that we have been introduced to that we should be paying more attention to. Not of this world means that we are set apart, separate from this world as believers, as those who follow Christ. And so as a minister, we have to be consecrated. We have to separate ourselves from the things of this world in order to be more full of God, more full of the Holy Spirit. Ideally, as we separate from those things of the world, we are full of the Holy Spirit. And so when the things of the world present themselves, we have already been equipped, we already positioned, we already have an understanding and have the discernment to say, this is not of God. I should not partake in these things. I should not pursue that thing. Having being full of the Holy Spirit allows us to have this filter that goes on in our lives to make sure that are we doing things according to what would be pleasing to God. So consecration can be described as devoting or setting apart of anything to the worship and service of God. So we can consecrate ourselves. We can consecrate our time. We can consecrate our business. We can consecrate our nonprofit. We can consecrate just about everything in our lives and make sure is this worthy of God's signature? Is this something that is pleasing to God? Is my business pleasing to God? Is my nonprofit pleasing to God? Am I pleasing to God? Is my character pleasing to God? Is what I'm saying and doing my behaviors pleasing to God? Even the things that we don't even say out of our mouths, are those things pleasing to God, the things in our hearts? The thing about God is, is that we can't pretend that God doesn't see our heart because he knows us. He can see past the surface level of things. And so he searches the hearts of man to determine what's in the heart of this woman, what's in the heart of this man, in order to determine what he will give to you, to determine what he has designed for you, to determine how he wants to use you, if you are someone he can use. And when I say what he wants to give to you, it's not that God holds back blessings from people or he teaches them lessons. It's more that if he knows in your heart, he observes your behaviors, your actions, your words, and he finds that it's worthy of certain things, then he will give it to you. So, of course, we should not worry about the things because he grants them to us. He gives them to us as his children. He gives us those those things. And so we have to make sure that we are determining the what our heart looks like to him. So if God were to look at your heart today, would he say that it is purified? Would he say that it has calluses on it? Kind of like when you are working out at the gym and you're lifting or you're working with metals quite a bit, that your palm will get calluses on it. And so our hearts can also be calloused where there's just so much on our heart that has been worn down and overworked because of people and different life situations. And so there's this callous around it. But also, it could be that God examines one's heart and finds that it is cold and shut down and rigid. And for those individuals, those are people who have unforgiveness, who have bitterness in their heart, who have frustration and anger and malice towards others. 
And so when God looks at our hearts, let's make sure he finds a purified heart. And how do we make sure that our hearts are purified? We continue to go to God with the things that are occurring in our lives and the things that he brings to our attention. You need to work on that. You need to forgive them. You need to separate yourself from that. That's the past you. Come back this way. That reminder like, hey, we're not going in that direction anymore. I often have to get these reminders also. I'm a growing leader too. So God will remind me that's not who you are anymore. The enemy tries to send an idea. That's not who you are anymore. What did I say about you? I said this. And he'll remind me of what he said about me. So let's make sure that when God searches the world, he roams the world looking for those he can use, that he can say, I can use her, I can use him. Because if we are not being used by God, then we're being used by the world. Your job pays your bills, sure. But the work of God is different. The work of God brings in this level of abundance and overflow that a job can never do. Can a job, and I've talked about this in the entrepreneurship sections, can a job give you the financial stability and time freedom that you desire? Not exactly. But when you're doing the work of God, you'll find that there's going to be a pipeline of flow and abundance that comes to you because of your obedience. And so we connect obedience to God's wealth. If we connect our obedience to God's wealth, we we'll realize that I no, I no longer have to worry about how this is going to happen. What's this going to do? How am I going to overcome this situation? How am I going to figure this out when we just say, God, I want to partner with you in order to connect to your level of wealth? Because the wealth and the level of wealth that God has is overflowing. It's abundant and it just keeps on. Imagine if we walked into heaven and they had a warehouse and we just walked into the entrance of this warehouse and then we're just walking and we're wondering like, when is this going to, we've been walking for 20 minutes now. We've been walking for 40 minutes. It's been two hours. It's been three hours. And there's just so much that's there for us that it just never ends. Let's tap into that kind of wealth. Let's remember that God is one that wants you to prosper. So when I talk about wealth, I'm talking about God wealth. I'm not talking about worldly wealth. And it is something that is for God's people to be prosperous. But let's be clear. I'm not one to say God wants you to be prosperous and continue to talk about prosperity, I'm also going to tell you about repenting. And that'll be another section of today's session. We also have to repent too. So as we partner with God, and you'll notice I'll continue to have this theme, as we partner with God, we can partner with the things of God. So our expectations of what the world can give us gone to the wayside, and now we're saying, this is what God can give me. So let me tap into what God can give me that the world can never give me, the freedom, the peace, the deliverance, the things that are beyond my imagination, beyond what I think I can do for myself. God can do them for me and let me partner with him so he can do it for me. And let me make sure that I'm in alignment with him to make sure that there is a pathway for that thing to come to me. If sin is in the way of the pathway of God doing things for me, let me remove the sin. That's consecration. I want to remove the thing that is blocking that pathway to what God has designed for me. But if you say, I'm not going to remove it. I enjoy this thing. I just, I don't find it as an issue. You'll find that there's going to continuously be that block towards that pathway that can prevent you from your advancement. And it's an advancement that God wants for you, but he cannot advance you if you're continuously in sin. So we have to repent. And the Bible says to repent daily because we sin daily. Our thoughts, our actions, maybe you rolled your eyes, maybe you didn't have a nice feeling about that person, maybe someone cut you off and you in that moment was, ooh, you were to heat a motive. You need to repent from that too. So we repent daily so we can be purified daily. We repent daily so we can be more holy. And 
more holy means to be like God. And so if we repent daily, then that means the adversary, which is the enemy, doesn't have the ability to say, well, she did this. And so I have legal right to move in her life. He did this. So I have legal right to move in his life because he did this. But if you every day at the end of the day, before you go to sleep, you say, God, I repent of my sins, the ones that I'm aware of and the ones I'm not aware of, because we can sin without even knowing it. Let's continue to purify our hearts, purify our heart through repentance. So Romans 12, 1, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So consecration is a form of worship, too. We worship in church. We worship at conferences. We can worship in our quiet time, in the early hours of the morning, in the evenings. That is a form of worship. But we also can worship God with the consecration of our body physically and spiritually consecrating ourselves. So naturally consecrating ourselves with our bodies, we could say, well, in order for me to do the thing God called me to do, I can't be out of shape. I have to be healthy. My immune system has to be amazing. If the world is saying that this new variant, this new thing is coming about, that this, this, and that is happening, let me in the natural take my vitamins, boost my immune system. And then we add the supernatural, but the supernatural succeeds the natural. So the supernatural supersedes the natural, which means that God's protection and his covering is far greater than that of the world. Uh, the natural thing of me taking immune system boosting things. So I can go to God and say, God, I ask you to put a head of protection around my house. I, got, I ask you to put a head of protection around my body. My body is continuously detoxed with your glory because I carry your glory, because I carry the Holy Spirit. My body is detoxed daily. And then in the natural, he may say, well, I need you to start taking vitamins. Here are some things that you should be taking, introducing you to someone on YouTube and they're saying, well, there's this vitamin that you can take. And he takes you down this journey of studying these different kinds of vitamins too. First Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we have made the decision to follow Jesus Christ, that is when we have been brought out of darkness into his marvelous light. So the light is God, the light is Jesus. But when we are in the world that we're in darkness, when those who are not following Christ, then they are in darkness. And so we want to remain in the light by being consecrated. There are certain things that I used to do that I no longer do anymore. And so another level of consecration becomes maturity. I've matured past this point in my life. I'm not going to participate in this thing anymore. One of the examples I can share is going to the club. So I used to go to the club, young, early 20s, going to the club and personally feeling convicted for going to the club, but still going. So as a woman I am today, why would I still go to the club? What benefit does that do for me? How does that glorify God? How does it glorify God? And if we really take a look at the, the music and the artist behind this music, you can see that it's not glorifying God. So everything I say on this podcast in any space always applies to me. So I will examine myself and say, God, what do I need to make the separation from? Certain things that I enjoy aren't always going to help me. So I have to make the separation. What once was entertainment now becomes something that is wrong. You just feel wrong about it. I used to like going to the club. And now when I look at it, it's a waste of time to me. So I'm just speaking of myself. But God will begin to speak to you about what you need to make the separation from in order to consecrate. And what is the result of consecration? The result of consecration is a deeper relationship with God. So let's talk about that. When I started to consecrate myself, I began to note that God is speaking to me even further, even more frequently, because that 
runway of communication for him is clear. There's not sin number one, number seven, and number 95 that's there. It's now that, okay, I repent, I repent, and the pathway is clear where he can talk to me. So there's that. And then the result of consecration is you will have a f- more fulfilled life. I know I have a fulfilling life Friday, but a fulfilled life in Christ means that you have more peace. That's the process of understanding. You have a different level of how your lifestyle is, how you live, because you are not exposing yourself to things such as depression, anxiety, and those sort of things. So going back to your communication with God, if you are not in the world and the world is saying, well, there's another variant, there's this other unknown pneumonia coming out, and there's this other thing, and there's wars. And so if you're in the world, you can get overwhelmed and you can say, well, God, what am I going to do? You can become frantic because that's how the world works, doesn't it? But when we're with God, we say, I hear these things coming up. I hear these prophetic words from trusted leaders that keeps on presenting itself to me. So how do I prepare for this thing that is coming up? How do I prepare my family? Most importantly, though, how can I help those in my extended family, so meaning God's people. How can I help God's people in this process as well? I think a lot of people, including myself, I was muted quite a bit in the past. And I just chose not to say things because of opinions or because of what I believe someone would say or judgment or thinking that people would think I was weird because I love God and I want to speak about him. I want to tell everybody about him. It's time to be unmuted. It's time to be unmuted. It's time to truly be the light in the spaces that you're in. But in order to be the light, you have to be consecrated. So make the separation. This is your choice. Make the separation so that the pathway of communication and the pathway of Things that God has for you can be clearer so that those methods of communication and that those things that God wants to give to you can come to you easily. And I spoke in another one of the videos on Fulfilling Life Friday. God is not boring. So in addition to that, he's not one to put in a box. Every time I ask God about certain things, he does it in a different way every single time. So at this point, I'm like, I can't expect God to do the same way he did it the last time because he's different. He's not going to do what I think he's going to do. He's going to do it how he wants to do it. So keeping this in mind, now I go in a situation saying, God, do it how you want to do it. Do it how you're going to do it. I mean, even with marriage, with marriage, you're like, all right, God, so I need you to help me with my spouse. And you have this idea of how it's going to get done. But when we move ourselves out the way, God can do his amazing work. So will you consecrate yourself? I know in the past I talked about how forgiveness can take time. But what I want to add is that when you work with God to clear your heart of unforgiveness, it can happen pretty quickly. Same thing with consecration. If you work with God for your consecration, it can happen pretty quickly as far as the separations. Who should I be listening to in this season? Who do I no longer be connected with? Do you want me to be at this job? Do you want me to be in this situation? Do you want me to be in this setting? And so forth. So I trust that you will make the decision about consecration and ask God, where do I need to consecrate? And work with the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, show me places where I need to consecrate, where I need to make the separation I know this is entertaining for me, but perhaps it's not pleasing to you. So I'm going to make the separation. So I have one request for you to like this video and comment with something that stood out to you. If you're listening on Spotify, I encourage you to leave a rating. So if you listen to at least one or more episode, you can leave a rating and just leave me an honest review there. This will help this message go out farther. 